Hello friends, this video on system of particles and rotational motion part 33 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now that we have solved quite a few problems uh, on this, so now I think we can go ahead and talk about uh, the last topic of this les lesson that is rolling motion. So we have spoken a lot about rotational motion that means what happens when a body rotates. So before we studied this lesson we only had the idea of translational motion. So now we got some idea about rotational motion as well. Now we will talk about a very specific type of rotational motion that is known as rolling motion. So what is this rolling? You would have often used this term rolling. We often say that the ball is rolling on the ground or something like that. But what exactly is rolling motion in physics? Let us have a look at that. So what is rolling motion? It is a combination of rotation with translation. So when we talk of rolling, it is not only rotation, but it is a combination of rotation with translation, right? So at any instant of time in a rolling motion, the bottom of the disc, which is in contact with the surface, is at rest on the surface. Now, if an object is in rolling motion, for example, let us look at the surface and let us suppose we have this disc. So when it rolls on the ground, what do you see? There is a rotational motion involved because the ball is rotating. At the same time, the ball is moving from one point to another. So there is a translational motion. So a combination of rotation and translation. So one point is clear. Next, it says that at any instant of time, I mean, you saw that the ball was rolling like this, but at any instant of time, if you look carefully, you will see that there is one point which is in contact with the surface. So that point is at rest. I mean, that point is not moving. I mean, if you look at the motion again, you see at every instant of time, there is one single point which is in contact with the surface and that point is not moving. I mean, that point is not moving in this fashion. Getting my point? So the point which is in contact with the surface is at rest on the surface. So that is a very uh, spe special characteristic of the rolling motion. Now I will also tell you what will happen if that point starts moving. Now let us talk about something called slipping. People often confuse rolling with slipping. Just now I told that in rolling motion, the point which is in contact with the surface, that is always at rest. Now, if that point keeps moving, we say that the object is slipping. So you understand what is slipping? That means the ball is rolling on the surface. The ball is also moving from one point to another. At the same time, the ball is slipping on the surface. That means the point which is in contact with the surface, that point is sliding on the surface. So that, that becomes a combination of rotation, translation plus slipping. So we call that rolling with slipping. So let us clearly look at the distinction between rolling and slipping. So when I talk of rolling, the motion is somewhat like this. That is the point which is in contact. Please look at it once again. The point right now, this is the point which is in contact with the surface. So if you see very clearly, the very next instant, there is some other point which is in contact with this point. Again, after some instant, there is some other point which is in contact with the surface. So that means the point which is at any instant of time, the point which is in contact with the surface, that point is not moving on the surface. So that at that instant, that point is at rest. But when I talk of slipping, what I mean that the point which is in contact with the surface, this point will also move. That means the ball will rotate the boil will also kind of slide on the surface. So that is known as slipping. So if this point, now when I talk of pure slipping, it means that the point which is in contact with the surface, that point moves. So in this case, we say that the boil is just slipping. It is not rotating at all. In this picture, if you see, it is there is no rotation involved at all. The boil is, the point which is in contact with the surface is just moving. Now, when I talk of rolling, now when I talk of rolling, there are two terms which we often use. One is rolling with slipping and the other one is rolling without slipping. So when I say rolling without slipping, I am talking about this scenario. 
but when I say rolling with slipping, in that case, I mean to say that there is rotation of the body, there is translation of the body, but at the same time, the point which is in contact with the surface is also moving on the surface. So that point is not at rest, right? So in this, I mean, as of now, at your level, we will mostly talk of rolling without slipping. So that is considered to be a simpler scenario and we will deal with that for now. So let us now talk about uh, a bit more detail about the rolling motion of a disc. So when I talk about the rolling motion of a disc, let us look at the detail of the velocities at every point of the disc. Now if we, we assume that this disc is a uniform disc, so the center of mass lies at the center of the disc that is this point C. Now the velocity of the center of mass will always be parallel to the surface. So if this is the surface, so this is the direction of the velocity of center of mass. Now at any instant of time, at any point of time, there will be two velocities involved. One is the velocity of the center of mass and the other one is the component of linear velocity corresponding to the rotation. That means at any point there will be two velocities that will be involved. One is the velocity of the center of mass. So this velocity of center of mass corresponds to the translational motion of the object, right? And there is another velocity that is denoted by VR that is the linear velocity corresponding to the rotation, linear velocity corresponding to rotation. That means this velocity is nothing but R omega. Right? So this Vr is the linear velocity which is the tangential velocity at every point, at any point. So th at this point it will be tangential, at this point this will be tangential, right? So at any instant of time there will be two velocities involved. One is the velocity of center of mass which corresponds to the translational motion of this object and the other one is the linear velocity corresponding to the rotational motion. So Vr is equal to R omega which corresponds to the uh, rotational motion. Right? Now looking at this figure, let us look at uh, the scenarios at different points. Let us first consider this point P0. So what happens at point P0? So at P0 also we have, we should have two components of velocities that is the velocity of center of mass and the linear component of velocity. Now what happens in this case? Now at point P0 the direction of velocity of center of mass is in this direction but the direction of the velocity that is the linear component of velocity is tangential and is in this direction right so that means vr and vc and these two are opposite in direction right now we know that if we want that this object should roll without slipping so for rolling without slipping what is our condition when does an object roll without slipping? When the point which is in contact with the ground is at rest. That means this point should be at rest. So when will this point be at rest? Only when the velocity in this direction is equal to the velocity in this direction. So that the net velocity at this point is zero. Only then this point will be at rest. So for rolling without slipping, Vr should be equal to the velocity of center of mass. What is Vr? Vr is nothing but R omega. So R omega should be equal to the velocity of center of mass. So we can say that this relation is the condition for rolling without slipping. So if you want that the motion should be a rolling motion without slipping, the velocity of the center of mass should be equal to R omega at this point P0. So that the net velocity at this point is 0 and therefore this point is at rest. Now what happens at some other point, for example at point P1. So even at P1 there will be two components of velocities involved. One is the velocity of center of mass and the other one is this V1. Right? Similarly for any other point the same thing is true. So here you have both the things. So what would be the net velocity of point P? So the net velocity that is V1 in this case will be so net velocity at this point will be equal to velocity of center of mass plus vr 
So this will be equal to velocity of center of mass plus r omega. Now we saw that the condition of, for rolling without slipping is that velocity of center of mass should be r omega. So this is r omega, this is also r omega. So this becomes 2 r omega. So that means when rolling without slipping occurs at that time, the velocity of the center of mass is r omega and the velocity at the topmost point is equal to 2 r omega that is twice the velocity of the center of mass. Now for any other point for example if we take this point, so in this point also there will be two velocities involved. One is the velocity of center of mass in this direction and the other one is v r in this direction. Similarly at this point there will be a v r in this direction and there will be a v center of mass in this direction. So the same is true for all the points on this disk. Right? Okay. So let us now talk about the kinetic energy for rolling motion. Now in case of rolling motion, what would be the total kinetic energy involved? Since rolling motion is a combination of translational motion and rotational motion, so total kinetic energy will be equal to translational kinetic energy plus rotational kinetic energy. So what is translational kinetic energy? That is given by half mv squared. And what is rotational kinetic energy? That is given by half omega squared. So what is this v? This v is nothing but the velocity of the center of mass. So this can be written like this plus half i omega square. What is i? i is moment of inertia and we know that we can write moment of inertia as mk square where k is nothing but radius of gyration. So this is a, a generalized form of writing uh, moment of inertia because the value of k changes as the object changes as the axis of rotation changes. So therefore we can write kinetic energy as half mvcm square plus half m k square omega square right now for the we know the condition for rolling without slipping for rolling without slipping what is my mathematical condition the mathematical condition is that the velocity of center of mass should be equal to r omega. So let us put the velocity value of the VCM as r omega. So what do we get? We get half m r square omega square plus half m k square omega square. Right? So even, so if we want we can write this entire thing in terms of velocity of center of mass. So we can write it as half m vcm square plus half m k square into vcm square by r square. So this can be written as kinetic energy is equal to half m vcm square into 1 plus k square by r square. So this is the kinetic energy associated with a rolling motion. Right? So Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.